So in this video, I'm going to walk through how to test a saga. And to give you context on what's going on here, suppose we have this chart right here, where when the user comes in, let's say they come in for the first time, you see how we load the chart. That loading is an API call. It is a get request to get the data for this chart. And that is handled by a Redux saga. So let's go ahead and see, first of all, what the saga is and then how to test for such a saga. All right, so we have this file right here, treasury rates, and this is related to the treasury rates chart that you see right here. This is the saga for that. So how does it work? Well, first of all, we have this generator here, get treasury rates saga. Now, what we're doing is we're first yield put. Yield put, all that means is we are dispatching a Redux action. Now, this is not about going through sagas here, so I'm just gonna give you a quick rundown on what the saga is before we go into the test. So here we are dispatching a start loader so the user knows that it's loading. From there, we are making a call to this following URL right here. In fact, we go over here, we make a get request to this URL right here. That's what we're doing. And then from there, once we receive the data, we put AKA, we dispatch a Redux action to say we have received the data. And then we set it also as just another Redux action and another Redux action to dispatch the ending loading, the end loading of our spinner. So that's that. These are the actions that are taken if we are successful. Now, if we fail, then we have a few things. First of all, we just show a toast, a message saying it has failed. And we also end the loading. Notice we started the loading here. And if this call fails, then we have to also end the loading. So this is our saga right here that we are testing for. And just going down, you'll see, yield take latest, all we're saying here is this, what I'm highlighting right here, this is a Redux action. So when this action is dispatched, then I wanna fire off my saga, what you saw right here. So we wanna test for this. How do we test for such a workflow? It's not very common that people use generators and, and this kind of syntax in JavaScript. So let's go ahead and see what's going on here. All right, so first things first, I have my describe block as usual, and now I wanna test for a very simple success scenario as I'm highlighting, and then a failure scenario. So we're just gonna segregate this into success and failure. Okay, so first of all, I have an array for all of my dispatched actions, and you'll see how this is used shortly. I also have set up an empty array for treasury rates. This is just a, think of it as a mock of, or a sort of simulated valued rates, typed rates, that's all it is. Now, I am spying on and then mocking you can think of it also as stubbing because I'm forcing down this API, this fetch treasury rates API. This comes from right here, same thing, fetch treasury rates right here. I am spying on this. I am giving it a mock implementation where I'm saying resolve the promise to return the rates that we just saw right here. All I'm saying is make the call work. That's that. And then from there, we also need a fake store a mock store. Why is that? You'll find that under the hood, when you deal with Redux based dispatching, the store calls a dispatch function. So we can just simply create a dispatch function within a fake store. And inside that function, we are dispatching, we are pushing the action to our dispatch action that we saw right here. And you'll see why this is useful. Okay. Let's go ahead and actually run this saga. Run saga is a built-in function. You gotta use that to actually run the saga. And to run the saga, you're gonna need a fake store. You're gonna need the saga that we just saw, the get treasury rates saga. This is my actual saga right here. And then we need to fire off our action, our dispatch, we have to, AKA we gotta dispatch our Redux action. Treasury rates requested. If we go into that, you'll see treasury, where's that? Treasury rates requested is the exact same thing right here. Treasury rates requested. So if this action is fired off, that's what take latest is. If it's fired off, then kick off this saga right here. 
That's what we're doing. We want to ensure that the saga is ticked off. Therefore, we dispatch this action. Okay, from there, let's go ahead and validate a few things. First of all, I expect my spy, that is my API call, to be called once. I expect four actions to be dispatched here. See, that's the use. That's why we have dispatch actions here. Every single time the store calls dispatch, this is an internal thing, every time that happens, we are appending or pushing actions into dispatched actions. That's what's going on here. And then from there on out, we are ensuring, we are validating there are four actions there. And what are those four actions? Well, as we saw, treasury rates received, treasury rates set, start the loading, end the loading. You'll see that right here. Treasury rates received, set, start loading, end loading. That's all we're doing. We are just validating that our actions are, have been dispatched as expected. And let's go through now a failure scenario. A failure scenario is very sim similar in setup, which we have dispatch actions here. But this time, when we are mocking and fake implementing our API call, we are making the promise reject. Therefore, it will enter this catch block. Okay. We also want to spy on a show toast function because that is another function that we are making use of here. Yield call, call just means invoke the function. So we want to ensure that this is spied on to see whether it was called. Okay, the same setup, we want to run the saga. And here we are seeing whether our API call spy fetch treasury rates was called once. Our show toast function was called also once. And then two Redux actions were dispatched. Start loading and end loading. So let's go ahead and see that. If we go here, end loading, start loading. Remember, start loading still gets fired even if we come into the catch because the catch happens on a failure of what I'm highlighting right here, this API call, which means this action has been dispatched. Okay, so to, to see all this actually running and working, let's go ahead and check this out. So here, you see, I have my two tests pa passing right now, the treasury rates saga. And to ensure that we've done this right, let's go ahead and see this test failing. So if I were to go here, and suppose I were to just take this out. So we don't have an end loading in our success case. Well, in that scenario, let's go ahead and see the test failing right now. Okay, so here we see a test failed. First of all, we expected four actions to be dispatched. We only got three, that's number one. And then, see how this works, how this test framework works is that if a test failed, like where is the test that failed right here, strict equal four. If this failed, the tests below that are not gonna even run or show the failure of them. So to show other tests that fail, I'm just gonna make this test pass right now. I wanna show you another test that failed. Well, let's go ahead and see that. So notice here, a test failed. What is that? Expect dispatch actions to contain the end loading action. In other words, this action was not dispatched. That's that. So this is how you ensure that your Redux Saga workflow is tested correctly. And of course, you can go ahead and do the same thing for the failure scenario if you want to comment out anything in the failure scenario. For example, the yield call of the show toast. Let's go ahead and see that test failing. And you'll see that the, the test has failed. So that's that. That is how you walk through a Redux Saga testing workflow. It might be confusing to test Redux Sagas as you are working with side effects and asynchronous actions and generators, but here it is.